Right. Hello, everybody. It's Jim Pamplin with DRIA, and welcome to another edition of DRIA Street Talk. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's money. Usually, when we are on these conversations and talking about loans, we're talking about hard money loans or loans for your buyer. But now I want to talk to something, talk about something that is beneficial to you as an investor, and that's a line of credit. A line of credit is not a secured loan. It is exactly that the opposite. It's unsecured. And a line of credit for a real estate investor can get you through the valleys when you're rehabbing or looking for properties or all kinds of other things. So today I want to introduce Eric Maas of MB Capital Solutions. Um, and we've selected Eric because, you know, we get all this stuff in the mail and about unsecured lines of credit. And it doesn't mean much because they don't know what we do. Eric and his crew know what we do as investors. So Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about unsecured lines of credit for real estate investors. Love it. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for the intro there. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so I'm, like, like Jim said, I'm Eric Maas with MB Capital Solutions. We specialize in helping small business owners and real estate investors access unsecured funding to take advantage of opportunities within their business. Um, and the, you know, the, the biggest thing for me with the unsecured line and what unsecured funding is, is it's a, it's our ability to get access to capital based on the strength of our personal credit, but under the business name, not tied to any, any asset like a house, a property, a car, nothing along those lines, which is really nice for us as as investors and business owners to have the access that we can use over and over again. That line of credit piece, that revolving side, means that we can use the lines over and over again for opportunity after opportunity because it's not tied to a project, not tied to a property. So Eric, are there restrictions on the use and uh, let's say a project timeline to pay it back? So there are no restrictions. Um, we have our, you know, investors and our our clients using the lines of credit for the gap funding in a project could be for down payment or the renovations portion of it. Um, we also have clients using it for marketing, right? Maybe they want to bump up their marketing in certain areas so that they can drive more motivated seller leads to them. Um, might just be working capital for payroll, for inventory. Um, buying materials, or just to have that reserve money, that emergency money behind them should a project not go as, as planned. And I'm an investor, and I know that, look, most projects don't go exactly as you, I should say, almost, I would say 99.9% .9 of the projects do not go exactly as you as you planned in the beginning. Um, so yeah, these these lines of credit can be used for anything and everything associated with the business. Yeah, right. A lot of our investors experience that. And I use the word valley because that's truly what it is. You're between projects or you're about to finish a project and your hard money line, your hard money line, your hard money is is consumed. And so you need a little push. But I like the idea of having working capital for marketing and other things like that. So tell me some of the borrowers that you might know of and what they do with their money. Nice. So um, I would say in working with real estate investors for the past 15 years as an advisor, and then also being a real estate investor myself for the past 20 plus years, I've seen our clients use the, the funding for just about every avenue of their business. Um, majority of our clients are using it in, you know, in for two different uh, ways, primarily as a real estate investor. I would say the first is the fix and flip, you know, investor who's really looking to buy a property, rehab it, fix it up, and then put it back on the market and, and sell it, right? Just fix it up and flip it. And that's more of a short-term use. So these lines of credit are great for short-term use. You know, then we, we also have the, the investor who might be buying rental properties. However, I don't recommend using lines of credit for a 20% down payment on a traditional buy and hold, simply because that's you know, a, a line of credit is a short-term product and we don't want to use short-term products for a long-term strategy. And a buy and hold, a 30-year buy and hold is, is a long-term strategy. However, 
with in 2012, Bigger Pockets coined the term um, the Burr method, right? Buy, buy a place, renovate, uh, get it, get it rented out, and then, and then, and then refinance, and then repeat, right? Burr. So with that model, when you're doing the buy and holds, the lines of credit work really well because you can use the line of credit to get into a project. Uh, maybe in conjunction with the hard money lender or with a private lender or possibly just a commercial lender that offers rehab financing. And you now have the ability to get into, into the property, fix it up, then refinance it to pay back the hard money, pay back the private money, and, and in essence, pay back that line of credit. So now that line is back down to zero for you to use it for your next opportunity while you go and rent this property out for the next 10, 20 plus years. So the fix and flips and the and the buy the burr method for the buy and holders. Well, that's very good advice. And I think it's it's uh people should remember it's not to be used as a down payment, but under that method or some sort of where you have an in scheme to get out, that's where it comes in really handy. So Eric, I'm gonna put up a link at the end of our video, but tell us how complicated it is to get this going and what's involved. So it, it's really simple where we like to start with a client is scheduling a, a 15, 20 minute, we call it a discovery call to really get to know what the client's goals and needs and wants are, right? What are your goals over the next 12 months, 36 months, five years as a real estate investor, as an entrepreneur, so that we can ensure that, that what we do is really a good fit for you. From there, we then have, uh, we want to take a look at your personal credit all the lines of credit that we help clients with, even though they're in the, you know, they're going to be in the business name, they do require a personal guarantee. So they're going to look at your personal credit and then also the age of your business to determine what options are there. So we would do a soft credit check for you. We do not want to be a hard inquiry and interfere with any lending options. Um, so we start with that soft pull. We then have a, about a 30 to 45 minute funding consultation where we lay out all of the options, right? What are the different types of lines of credit out there as a real estate investor that you can start to incorporate based on the strength of that credit and the age of the business? Um, walk you through the options, walk you through the credit. And if there are things along in the on your credit that aren't perfect or that may not put you in an optimal position for funding, we will strategize with you. That's why we call ourselves funding strategists not necessarily brokers, right? We're going to help strategize with you, the client, to make sure that before you're approaching the banks, um, you're, you're set up in an optimal position so that by the end of that call, you really know the options and you know what, what it's going to take to help to get you to get you access. Once everything's lined up, within one to three weeks, we're out there getting clients somewhere between fifty dollars and $150,000 of unsecured cash access revolving lines of credit under the business name. So, you know, Vijay and I talked about this and the reason we wanted to talk to you is because we both, of course, being in the business for a long time, get lots of junk mail for unsolicited lines of credit. Our business is a very consultative business. And so what is attractive to me about MB is that you actually do talk to investors and help them learn about how to use this. I think that's very important, especially for someone new to lines of credit. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's one of the things that we say differentiates us from a lot of our competitors is we are not just customer service reps. Nothing wrong with that model, right? But it's not transactional to me. To me, it's all, it's all about the relationship. Um, this business was built with just myself and then myself and an assistant and just doing the right things for my clients, not only getting them the access, but showing them how to put it to use. How do you strategically use the lines of credit today, a year from now, five years from now, so that you can continue to have long-term success within your business? Um, and from there, it's really, really been great to build relationships with investors around the country for the past uh, 15 years. It's uh, and, and being an investor myself, I learn a lot from what's going on and, and what, you know, what are some things I may want to incorporate into my real estate business? Well, we certainly can never stop learning. So Eric, I'll give you the final word, but just to remind everyone, there'll be a link 
so that you can uh, get a referral and, and um, sort of apply. You can actually do everything online to set up the conversation. And what will follow is a conversation. I want to assure people of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to start with that discovery call. And we want to learn, learn more about what you have going on and what your goals are. All right, Eric, I thank you for your time today. And I know the people at Drea Street Talk will enjoy learning about this topic. And I hope they call you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks again. Okay.